So let's wrap up now and then ask you guys to apply some of these concepts about reliability and validity. Hopefully you get the gist now of what these two concepts mean. And also it's important to understand why we need to maintain these things in research. So let's bring it back to what we opened, talking about measurement error. And think about what happens if we don't have reliable measurements and or we don't have valid measurements. Okay? When we have a loss of reliability, when our measurements are inconsistent or unreliable, then that means our measurements are not repeatable. Now, in terms of the measurement error that we opened this lecture series with, what that means is that our error in our data collection is random. So it's the second type of error that we're talking about then, this random or unsystematic error. And that is going to make significant differences, difficult or impossible to find. That is, if we have so much error that we don't really know what it is that we're measuring because our measurements are all over the board. If we have an instrument and we want to know, does this measure intelligence? Or that we think it measures intelligence. But if it's so inconsistent or unreliable that it's producing intelligence scores for people that are all over the place, then we'll never really know if we're actually even measuring intelligence. And what that's also going to do is make it very difficult for us to find significant differences if, say, we want to know um, differences across gender or across age or really anything else that we would want to do. So that's the problem with the loss of reliability. Again, if you think about on the last slide, if we don't have reliability, look at those last two targets there. Okay, The points are all over the place, so we can't even really know where the person's aiming when we see the scatter of points on those last two targets. Compare that to the first two targets. Now in that situation, we know where the person's aiming. Because we have reliability, we can see that they're aiming in the right place in the first uh, panel there. They're aiming in the wrong place, as it were, in the second panel, but at least we know where they're aiming. And again, in the last two panels, it's very hard to tell exactly where they're aiming. It kind of looks like they're on target in that third one, and pretty much looks like they're somewhere in the upper right on that last one. But again, exactly precisely where they're aiming, it's very difficult to tell because we don't have reliability. This is a point well made by Jackson as well at the conclusion of chapter 3 when she talks about the relationship between reliability and validity. So I'd encourage you to, to read or reread that section in Jackson's chapter as well. Now a loss of validity, even if we have reliability and our measurements are repeatable, a loss of validity is, is not a good thing in research because that means that our measurements are biased. In particular, that introduces the first type of error that we talked about, systematic error. Now this is actually going to make it easier to find significant differences, but the differences that we're finding aren't necessarily going to be the differences in which we're interested. That is, they're not going to be based off of the variable that we claim that they're based off of. So think about it this way. We might have an intelligence test that's very reliable, but if it's not valid, if it's not measuring intelligence, but it's measuring something else, then we're going to run around making claims about intelligence when it's not really intelligence that we've measured, and therefore it's not really intelligence that we're talking about. So again, that makes a, a very serious violation when we have a loss of validity, even if we indeed have reliability. So now again, let's think about applying some of these concepts. So uh, let's say we have a woman, Mrs. Fox, who's in a real estate training program. She went before an examiner who administered to her a test which would enable her to be certified as a broker. But she failed the test. Obviously this upset her, so she goes down to the street to a different examiner and takes a different form of the same test. And this time she passes the test. So do you guys think in this situation that Mrs. Fox was reliably evaluated? It's kind of hard to say that she was reliably evaluated if she did the, what, it, what is similar to stepping on the scale, ends up with a weight that she doesn't like, so she steps on a different scale and ends up with a weight that she does like. Okay, That's similar to what's happened here. Okay, She got a test score she didn't like. Immediately after that, she was reassessed with something that's supposedly measuring the same thing, but is producing a very different score. That is, a passing score. So in this case, it's very hard to say that Mrs. Fox was reliably evaluated. Let's think of another situation. Mr. Wolf was training to be a paramedic. After completing the training course, he took the test which would certify him as a paramedic. His score was just below the cutoff point. Now this upset him too, so he spent the entire next week studying and reviewing the material covered in the course. At the end of the week, he took a different form of the same test. This time, he passed the test with flying colors. 
In this situation, do you think that Mr. Wolf was reliably evaluated? I want you guys to write down your answer to this one. You're going to need it to complete the quiz that's associated with this lecture. In fact, this is going to be one of the items on the quiz. And then we can discuss the answer to this item in class on Thursday. Now let's look at a few examples. These are going to be talking about the different types of validity. Okay? And in particular, although it's not necessary to always uh, you know, read a blurb and identify what type of validity is there, this is a good way to sort of test your knowledge and make sure that you guys can distinguish among the different types of validity. I know they can be a little bit confusing, and I know that some of them also sound very similar. So be sure and post questions about these on the, uh, the online discussion forum over the lectures. Or, of course, just bring them up in class uh, if you have any questions about these different types of validity. And you can do that before even completing the quiz, which isn't going to be due until Thursday again. Okay, But let's look at some examples of these, the different types of validity. Okay. I know, again, that it's hard. That a lot of them sound the same. A lot of them begin with C or con or the same few letters or whatever. But, again, it's important to try and tease these apart. So let's use some examples to help us do so. Let's say Dr. Gomez wants to know whether a student's TV watching habits can predict success in her contemporary fiction course. Okay. Now, in terms of, of, of the types of... Uh, um, uh, terms that we've been using then, what she's saying is that her students' TV watching habits are the measurement that she's taking. Okay? And the construct she's interested in is success in her contemporary fiction course. In this context, okay, if the TV watching habits can indeed predict success in her contemporary fiction course, then what type of validity would that measurement, TV watching habits, contain? Think about it for a minute and write down your answer. Again, all of these uh, examples on validity you'll need for the online quiz. Next, many standardized tests, including IQ tests and aptitude tests, have been criticized for being biased against certain ethnic or socioeconomic status groups. Okay, that is, they think that they've been developed, and there's a lot of people who would argue, and in some cases rightly so, I think, that these tests have been developed with a little bit of ethnocentrism in mind, that is, that, that as it says here, that they're biased against specific ethnic or socioeconomic status groups. Now, the problem with this is that these tests are purported to be a general, a global, uh, um, um, ethnic general measure, okay, so not specific measure, of intelligence or aptitude. Okay, well then in this situation, okay, the reason that these tests are criticized is they think a lot of the items have been selected Okay, they're going to disadvantage certain populations. In this situation, then, if we think about these tests, okay, what sort of validity are we thinking about here? In other words, what sort of validity do we think might be violated, or do we think that these types of tests may not contain? Think about it for a minute. Look back at the different types of validity and think about what it may be, and write your answer down before moving on. Next, I may want to know how often students that I refer to the Ronella Learning Center for further testing actually have learning disabilities. Okay, it may be that I suspect that a student may have a specific problem or a specific challenge in learning material. Okay? And so then if we think about my measurement as my own hunch or my referral to the Ronella Learning Center, if I'm thinking about that as a measurement of whether or not a student actually has a learning disability, then to the extent that I'm correct, then what sort, of, uh, what sort of validity then would my measurement, that is my hunch or my referral, contain if they find out through further testing that they do actually have a learning disability? And finally, there's a lot of talk and a lot of wonder about whether or not student evaluations actually measure instructor effectiveness as they're purported to measure, and performance, or whether they just measure likability or student satisfaction in the course. So if student evaluations are supposed to be measuring instructor effectiveness and performance, what sort of validity are we talking about here? In other words, if they are in fact measuring that, okay, or whether they're measuring likability or student satisfaction instead, what type of validity is most relevant in this situation? Again, write down what you think your answer is it's going to be necessary for the online quiz. And that'll do it. That's the final example, okay, introducing these concepts of reliability and validity. 
Okay, we're going to apply these concepts again in class on Tuesday through an activity similar to the, the way we've been doing it in the past. The quiz, the online quiz for this material is due on Thursday. And then if there's any questions about some of the responses on that quiz, then we'll cover them in class at that time as well.